assign uh, seven different duties of different people coming up or do we maybe exercise training people up uh, and each week having more of one person and so we're playing around a little bit with different ways to uh, encourage people in the ministry because actually our goal as a church is to raise up leaders it may be an interesting concept for some of you uh, you might think well there's a leader and, and, and there's people that do things and I can just be a person that goes to church but here at Acorn, our vision is to help everybody grow in the Lord and be able to uh, raise up and do great things for him and not just leave you in the pew. Because our life as Christians is probably only 3 or 4% in the pew. What it means to be a Christian and live radically for Jesus, eh, only 3% of it is right here. The reality of it is, is what you're doing the rest of your week, how you're interacting with people, how you are on your job. Your prayer life, your uh, seeking the Lord in your own personal Bible time, uh, how you uh, treat your heart and the hearts of others, that is extremely important. Although we are very grateful for your attendance here on Sundays, this is more of a time to just get a charge, to meet with the, the Lord, to break bread and, and drink of the table with one another, and to be encouraged by, you know, we're all on the same team together. And then to go back out and uh, do the Great Commission again. Before I get rolling today uh, on the message, I do want to pray. And amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for those that are gathered here. I thank you for your love. And most of all, God, I thank you for your forgiveness. God, we are unworthy servants. We are unworthy of the grace that you have poured out on us. None of us at the end of the day could think that we did enough righteous acts to earn your salvation. God, you shed your blood while we were yet sinners. You ordered that your son would die for us on Calvary. And God, I am extremely greatly grateful personally for, for my own life and, and, and the life that you've given me. Uh, I have had hopeless days like that that poor boy that, that Josiah mentioned that they had met online. And, and God, I've had difficult days where I've done wrong. God, I've done things uh, in my life in which I don't uh, have any uh, thing but regret, embarrassment to reflect on. And yet, Father, through all the darkness and through all the mistakes, you have given me grace and you have extended that grace to everyone that will come and drink of the waters. And God, I pray that uh, this morning as we look at forgiveness and we think about it, that some of us will yearn even to have a deeper relationship with you. And also, God, that we'll find some things in our heart that we actually need to forgive others for. Because it's not always us that, that do the evil things, God. It's sometimes uh, others that have done it to us. Sometimes we've been the recipients of unjust treatment. Father, there's been some times in my life where others have hurt me. And it's hard. It's hard to forgive them uh, sometimes when I reflect upon the pain that was inflicted by their actions. And yet, God, when I consider the grace that you've extended to me, when I consider how much you've forgiven me and how, how often you do that, uh, how could I withhold the same spirit towards others? Father, we love you this morning. I do pray that your word will penetrate deeply and powerfully and strong and go forth in the way that you desire it. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being here today. I am really, really grateful for you coming today. Thank you uh, for showing up and uh, taking time on your Sunday to be with us here. It means a whole bunch to me. So thank you. So we're going to look at a text that Josiah read, and I'm going to read it again. But it says, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, this is Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven or 77 times, some translations will say. Regardless, we, we know that the point being said is that the limit that Peter had put wasn't the limit that the Lord had put. The Lord threw out a number there that was extravagant. It was large. It was enough to know that he wasn't putting a limit on forgiveness. And that's really hard to think about when you chew on it, especially if you've been injured. 
by somebody. You know, if I have to forgive this person, okay, God, I can forgive them. But does that mean that I, I, I have to have a relationship in the way it was before? Do things have to return to normal? Does forgiveness mean that it has to be just like it was? What about boundaries? I'm kind of start. I'm a little tired of getting stepped on God. Does forgiveness mean I, I'm just a doormat now? I just let him do that? Do I just let him keep on doing the same thing to me? Over What does forgiveness mean for me? Is it just a heart issue? Or does it involve my actions too? Does it mean I have to trust them? Because I don't trust them anymore. I mean, they've done this to me over and over and over and over again, God. How can I trust them? I mean, if I trust them, they'll just do it again. And to be specific, God, Peter says, if my brother comes to me and does this. Now, a brother wouldn't do that to me over and over and over again. Maybe this is only talking about brothers, people that have come and